When, when you hit an elephant, it's no use hitting them on the, on the body because you yeah. just scrape your what's name like that. So the only place really you can hurt them any, anyway, but even though it is a little bit, it's just about there. Right? And I caught him lovely. Joy, just here. Yeah. Right? You know, I really caught him nice. Right. You don't fucking learn, mister, do you? Hey. He knows that I'll get him run across the fucking ear hole. And he knows that I'll lift him up when you get him across there. Come here. 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 Come here. 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 Don't you dare, mister. Don't you dare. Don't you think of it. Don't you dare. You know I'll come back and give you one. Behind the big top, there's an ugly world of beatings, intimidation and confinement for hundreds of circus animals. For over a year, animal defenders field officers obtain jobs with different circuses, working with lions, tigers, elephants, horses, camels and llamas. Animals were followed as they toured the UK during the summer and then back to their permanent quarters for the winter. Activity was recorded on video, and cameras were left to record events when no one else was present. 400 hours of video evidence were gathered, although someone did seem to realize they were being filmed. Circus animals spend almost their entire lives on the road, moving from one temporary encampment to another. At the end of the summer season, they return to their winter quarters, where things may be equally makeshift. The majority of animals observed spent most of the day with their movements severely restricted, often for the entire day. These horses were kept in tiny stalls or tied in their lorry for 98% of the time. These were tied on a short rope for 91% of the time. This poor elephant, who would naturally roam for miles each day, was chained for all the time she wasn't performing or posing for photographs in the ring. Every day, all summer long, barely able to move. These bears, at their permanent quarters, didn't leave this metal container during the animal defender's study. And this hippo lived for months 
alone in this dark barn with just this tiny tank of water. On the road, lions and tigers spend most of their time in cages on the backs of lorries known as beast wagons. At the circuses studied, the animal defenders found that lions and tigers spent from 75 to 99% of their time in these metal boxes. The average space per animal is less than two by two and a half meters, and that includes where they have to go to the toilet. Some circuses provide so-called exercise cages, but these are a lot smaller than the name implies. They're usually bereft of anything to actually interest the animal. And the privilege of this extra bit of space will probably only amount to an hour or two a day anyway. You may wonder why they bother. Well, sometimes they simply don't. When circuses move town, Animals can be locked away in transporters for up to 26 hours, even when the journey itself lasts only two or three hours. Always on the move. With the best will in the world, circuses cannot provide animals with the facilities they need. And that is with the best will in the world. You there, you, on the fucking way. Mara! But the circus is a world of illusion. So when a walking stick has a screw protruding from the end, it's only the elephant that gets the point. And this circus claimed they were inspected by the RSPCA. But what if there was something they didn't want anyone to see? One evening, a lioness called Nala with Circus Harlequin was found seriously injured in her beast wagon. She had been attacked by a male tiger. She was bleeding from the neck and shoulder and covered in wounds. Staff said a vet might put her down. But an RSPCA representative was due to visit. So how do you hide a full-grown lioness? Nala was isolated in the end section of the beast wagon and bags of sawdust were packed against the partition and the bottom shutter to her cage closed. She was out of sight, and when the inspector arrived, the beast man was instructed to pretend to be cleaning the shutters so that nothing appeared suspicious. The inspector even stood talking in front of where the stricken Nala lay, but left unaware of the subterfuge. For two weeks, Nala remained sick. Alex Lacey, the presenter, treated her himself. Then, with Nala looking better, but still uncomfortable, Alex Lacey left the circus, taking his animals with him. Nala wasn't the only lioness having a miserable summer. At the Hippodrome Circus in Great Yarmouth, a cage door slipped and severed the tip of Laura's tail. And another lioness in the act, Flo, was heavily pregnant and off her food. The cubs were due so soon that she was isolated each night so that the other lionesses would not eat her young. The presenter, Joe Fawcett, admitted that Flo would perform right up until she gave birth and would be back in the ring the following day. 
Circuses claim that animal acts have a special bond with their presenter. But Flo and Laura have had three different presenters over the past three years and had been trained by someone else in the first place, Richard Chipperfield Sr. This is Flo and Laura's permanent home, the farm owned by Chipperfield Enterprises Limited, where trained animal acts are rented to circuses. Here, living conditions are little different to being on the road, yet the farm has been in permanent residence for decades. Lions and tigers live in these metal containers, beast wagons, or these grim indoor dens. Three young lion cubs were delivered and put into one of these dingy indoor cages and did not leave their medieval dungeon for a month. What kind of world have they been born into? For many years, the only change of scenery these animals could get was inside small, dimly lit training rings. However, attempting to deflect criticism by the animal defenders, an outdoor enclosure was built and first used in January 1997. But this was so badly designed that the animals could not be controlled and moved from section to section. So if an animal decided to stay a little longer in the sunshine, staff would resort to hurling stones at them until they moved. If they misbehaved, they would probably be beaten and would not be going back in the enclosure for a while. No fucking use at all. Go on. 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 But most of the time was spent in metal containers. The site was monitored over a five month period. Detailed timings were taken and averaged over a continuous 28 day period. Overall, the lions and tigers spent 96% of their time stuck inside these metal boxes. Poor old Solomon, a breeding only lion who did not perform, spent almost his entire time in his beast wagon. Can you imagine being stuck inside a metal box when the cold weather starts to really bite. When it's so cold that the water troughs freeze solid. Doesn't it make you realize what a long, long way from home these animals are? and other circus animals are probably enduring similar deprivation. Like these ones at Mary Chipperfield Promotions, facing snow and floods. The conditions in which performing animals live may seem grim at the best of times. But what if an animal is sick or injured? One of these monkeys has a prolapsed rectum. The trainer, Michael Howes of Club Chipperfield, says it is a common occurrence and may be related to the stress of training and making the animals walk on their hind legs. One Club Chipperfield worker holds the struggling monkey down whilst Howe slips on a pair of gloves and pushes the squealing monkey's rectum back. Stop it! Stop it! Fucking 
Okay, the second time he's done this. Drop it! But it's not just the exotic animals that are having a miserable time at the ugliest show on earth. Horses, which account for almost half of circus animals, spend almost their entire time either tied on short ropes or in tiny pens. The best they can expect is to be tied outside on a few meters of rope, and even then, this is unlikely to be for much of the day. There will be no gallops across the field for these horses this summer. One of the great circus myths is that training is by kindness and reward. They describe it as positive reinforcement and say it's just like training guide dogs. But people rarely see real training, just rehearsals on the road. And besides, most animals are repeating the same tricks or simple variations that they have performed for years. An elephant may have gone through the same routine for over a decade. Small wonder that they may plod through their paces with little prompting. But it is not by accident that circus people describe training a new group of animals as breaking an act. Let's look at Mary Chipperfield Promotions, leading animal trainers and suppliers of circus animal acts around the world. Here's Mary Chipperfield herself, with a little positive reinforcement. Get up! Go on, get up! Yes, men, get up! Get up! Get up! Go on! Come on! Up! up. Go on! Cow, just stand the bit. Get up! Get up! You like thick coat? Oh, bloody hell! I'm going to Fine. Get up! Get up! Yes, men, get up! That bloody stupid now. Go on. Go on. No, you're going out. Yasmin Ali. Yasmin Ali. Yasmin Ali. Yasmin Ali. Go on. Go on. Aladdin. Go on. Go on. Aladdin. Go on. 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 What possible future awaits the young chimpanzees at Mary Chipperfield's farm? Teddy, so mischievous, inquisitive and playful. Sometimes he has an outdoor cage, but on other occasions he will be shut in his trailer, all alone and always craving attention. And dear little Trudy, just 18 months old, alone and insecure, clinging to her comforter in her small cage, in a big, empty barn. At night, Trudy is put into a little carrying box. But sometimes, like any small child, just doesn't want to go in and needs a helping hand from Mary Chipperfield. <coughs> Maybe this is their future. Some older chimps at the farm. They spend the night in this cage with an outdoor cage for the day. They are fed out-of-date cake, bread, old fruit, or vegetables, usually from the local supermarket waste bins. One of the chimpanzees, Mickey, is 27 years old. He was snatched from the wild in 1969 taken from paradise to who knows where, and has ended up here. 
Despite their genetic similarity to us, how can we even imagine his suffering? What a great contribution to conservation circuses are making. This is Christmas Day 1997, and these elephants are spending the day chained to the ground in a barn in Hampshire. Four of these animals once roamed free in Africa. The largest animals that walk the earth they could roam 20 miles a day in the wild. They live in complex matriarchal family groups and mourn their dead. But in three months, three of these animals never left this barn. The other two were taken out for 10 minute training sessions and then put back. They will remain here until wanted by another circus or zoo. They are confined, deprived, and then beaten. They say elephants never forget. What have they been taught about the human race? And how could Tembo, Rosa, Opal, Rani and Flora ever forgive? In the face of this misery, it is little wonder that circus animals go out of their minds. With nothing else to do, frustrated, repetitive, stereotypic behaviour takes over.
Can you imagine living like this, day after day, month after month? Could you even sit and watch this for an hour without reaching for the remote control and fast forwarding to the end? Except for them, it doesn't end.